Hello and welcome to today's lecture. Today we're going to be talking about Mises' design for the IIT Campus Master Plan and some of the buildings that he designed on campus. This is probably one of the most important lectures from this competition, since this is the same campus where you are also going to be designing your building for the Mies Memorial Library. We'll even be talking about the specific sites proposed in the brief. So pay close attention and let's dive right into it. Mies came to the US in 1938 to work as the director of the architecture department at the Armour Institute. Only two years after that, in 1940, the Armour Institute and the Lewins Institute merged, creating what we know today as the Illinois Institute of Technology, or IIT. Mies was also commissioned to design the campus master plan for this new institution. Before we move on into this though, it's worth mentioning that Mies worked closely with Ludwig Hilbersheimer on the campus master plan. So, just as it happened with him and Lily Rage back in Germany, it is hard to tell how much is wrongly attributed to Mies these days. So to be safe, let's just say that every time you hear Mies this this or Mies did that in the context of the IIT master plan, you should always consider it was him and Hilbert Seymour. So now, moving on. The overall design of the master plan was a work in progress for years until construction finally began. But the truth is, it is still evolving today, with new buildings being added regularly. Mies knew such a vast project could not be defined to the finest detail on paper. It would be constructed over time, and he knew that his design would need to be able to adapt and take in new variables along its way. So at one point, he took this radical approach and defined a super clear rational structure on which he could base the entire design. He created a 24 by 24 grid, that is feet, so it's roughly 7.5 meters, that he spread over the entire campus. That's right, this grid was laid on top of building sites, but also city blocks and streets. It was everywhere. Mies envisioned this being what would give unity to the campus as a whole. All buildings that were to be designed for the campus had to follow this grid. At the core of this system was what Mies liked to call universal space. Universal space was his way of saying that buildings should be flexible in the sense that they should be able to adapt to whatever is happening or needs to happen inside of them. Today, tomorrow and hopefully for a very long time. Human needs evolve. They always have. And today, they arguably do so quicker than they have ever before. Buildings, however, stay with us for a very long time. Long as in decades or even centuries. So in order for these buildings to remain relevant over these periods of time, they need to be flexible, or how Mies would like to say it, they need to become universal spaces. In this sense, a very fragmented building, where most walls are structural, won't be able to adapt to new uses in the future, right? But an open floor plan with minimum structural elements would, becoming therefore a universal space. The campus is by far the largest project Mies ever worked on. Mies was an architect, not an urban planner. But in the IIT campus, he expanded this universal space idea and took it to another level, scaling it up to the urban scale. In these drawings, we can see some of the evolution of Mies' master plan. At first, he didn't use the grid, and his proposal was based on pure symmetry. Then, as the project evolved, he introduced the grid, and even though symmetry still remain an important part of it, you can see how he became more comfortable breaking it at some points. As long as all buildings were part of the grid, it was okay to break the symmetry, as that wasn't what gave the campus unity anymore. From here on, Mies experimented with dozens of possible layouts, some of which we can appreciate in these sketches and collages. Several of these layouts were considered final at some point, yet the project never stopped evolving and the campus we see today, or even the campus that Mies saw back in the 60s, doesn't quite match any of these drawings. Now, Let's take a closer look at some of the buildings that Mies designed on his own master plan before we move on to looking at the sites proposed for the Mies Memorial Library competition. Mies designed more than 50 buildings for the campus, including research buildings, academic buildings, offices and apartments. The most iconic is by far the Crown Hall, which is the architecture school building. Mies described this building as almost nothing, and in many ways, brings all the design principles that he preached together into a single building. 
The crown hall is a two-story building and the top floor is pure universal space. Here Mies took the structure to the outside in order to create a continuous open space that's as flexible as they come. Who's to say what can or cannot happen in this space, right? Some closets and furniture might make it into an architecture school today, but replace that with other furniture and you can quickly turn it into an art gallery, offices, a theater. That's what universal space meant to me. Other of his buildings worth mentioning are, for example, the Pearlstein Hall or the Wishnik Hall. These were amongst the first buildings to be constructed on campus and they were built almost at the same time between 1945 and 1947. As you know, buildings can take years to be designed. But in the IIT, Mies was faced with the challenge of having to deliver many buildings in a short period of time. If each building had taken like, I don't know, five years to be designed, the campus would have never been usable. So Mies did what he did best. On top of the already modular grid of the master plan, he created a modular structural system and facade system that could be used on multiple buildings. Look at these two photos. Unless you are deeply familiar with Mies' work at the IIT, it can be very hard to tell these two buildings apart. This allowed Mies to deliver the science quickly. And in return, this also allowed the IIT to become a large, profitable and therefore financially stable institution quite fast. On the inside, these buildings could become different things thanks to the universal space concept. And over time, they have actually shifted from being purely academic buildings to becoming a mix of classes and offices. And they've done this successfully thanks in part to the flexibility offered by Mises Design. You're probably familiar with the eternal architecture debate about form versus function. Well, this is function over form at its greatest. Here, the form and appearance of the buildings have no ambition other than to become an enclosure for the function that goes on inside of them. A building that doesn't quite follow this same design is the Robert Carr Memorial Chapel. Not that it changes much though. The structure isn't made out of steel in this case, but it's still a pretty basic brick and glass enclosure of... You've guessed it? Yep, it's more universal space. As you can see, the Crown Hall is arguably the most unique of his buildings on campus. It houses the architecture school nonetheless. And this is pure speculation on our side, but it doesn't seem crazy to think that Mist left this building for last so that he could dedicate it the time and care that he thought it deserved. Now let's move on to the part that we know all of you are waiting for. Let's take a closer look at this part of the campus where the Crown Hall is, which is where you'll be designing the Mies Memorial Library for this competition. You know from the brief that you can pick one of three possible sites to work in, and each of them is interesting in its own way. The first possible site is the largest, and is located between the Crown Hall and the Siegel Hall. What's interesting about this site is that if we look at almost any of Mises' design for the campus, it seems clear that a building was meant to be built here and never was. Looking at 33rd Street as a symmetry axis, it also becomes apparent how the Armour College of Engineering on one side is missing its counterpart on the other side, which could be a good opportunity to consider during your site selection process. The second and third side options are located at either side of the Paul Galvin Library. This building was not designed by Mies. It was designed by Walter Netsch when he was working for Skidmore, Owen and Merrill. The library takes clear inspiration on Mies' design for the Crown Hall, and today is the main library on campus. Site 2 is strategically located between the Crown Hall and the library, which makes a good case for placing a new architectural focused library there. Site number 3, on the other hand, is further apart from the Crown Hall, but is right behind the IIT main building, which also used to be the main building of the Armour Institute of Technology. In this sense, the third site could have a more symbolic position as it connects the historic building with the rest of the campus, becoming a nexus between the old and the new, the past and the present. And it is also located right next to the Paul Galvin Library. There is a lot to discover from the IIT campus master plan and its buildings. Certainly a lot of lessons to be learned here. We hope this lecture has helped you better understand how this campus came to be and also shed some light of some of the specific sites that this competition invites you to consider and design on. 
Stay tuned for our next lecture, where we will be looking at some of the buildings that Mies designed during his time in America outside of the IIT campus. Until then, bye!